First of all, um, the one thing as, as you continue to um, go on, get better at uh, identifying and measuring how well you know things. Um, and the thing is, keep in mind the speed of this class is probably about a half to a third of what the speed of a college class would be. Seriously. And if you start falling behind or slipping down that slippery slope of, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can, if this, if I can pass this class, I've been there, I know what it's like you have to get your track shoes on and get going right away. Because if you let it go for a couple days, or if you uh, another week goes by and you don't go talk to the professor again, or get a tutor again, um, information moves quickly, and it all builds upon itself. So um, the big thing is you just have to get aggressive in getting all this stuff, making sure you understand what's going on. Because, I'll tell you the truth, I, there was more than once where I fell behind in a class, I was like, oh, well, I'll get it figured out, I'll get it figured out, yeah. You know, unless you, unless you modify your behavior, things don't change. It's like me sitting there, eating a bunch of stuff, 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 and thinking I'm going to lose weight. Until I change my behavior, nothing changes, and the worse off it's going to get. There was, I hate to say this, but probably four different classes where I just got behind enough, I couldn't catch up, failed the class, I'd take it again. Okay? So you have to have your sensors out that, oh crap, oh. I've got to get going. I've got to get this figured out, and I've got to do something because things are too expensive to do them twice. Okay, so number one, these bottom ones, these either need to be in parentheses or both be negative. Okay, um, why? If we think about, go back and think about exponents, where are exponents positive, where are exponents negative? Positive exponents are on the top, negative exponents are on the bottom. So this x has a positive exponent, it's on top. This y has a negative exponent, it's on bottom, so does the z, it's on bottom. Okay, so it kind of ties some things together. Um, condensing this one, um, yeah, I did on, on the answer sheet, I reduced it one more step. So this goes back to probably both of these. Okay, just check stuff thoroughly on how you, what you have and what I have. If there's a discrepancy, there's probably a reason why. Okay, so. Um, this one is a one-stepper, natural log. Um, but notice I rewrote it in an equation, and then I can grab my calculator and go from there. <coughs> Divide by 8, rewrite the log, and then um, just evaluate, and I, I didn't write the divided by three. I think we're all probably past that point of showing divide by eight and divide by three and stuff like that. But if you're ever not quite sure what I'm doing, let me know. Um, number five, this is where I got concerned from a, for um, a few people. I had a few people that just thought we could just drop the longs. No. Nope. That right there, I hate to, I hate to, you know, pee in your Cheerios, but that shows a gross misunderstanding of what's going on, and you're just scrambling at things, trying to find a way to get a problem done. Okay? No nope. subtraction. We can rewrite it as a single log, and then we reuse the def we use the definition of a log: four to the one half equals x over x minus one. Logical step. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So yeah, a couple of you struggled to go from here to here. Okay, remember, base is four. My log is equal to my exponent, so my exponent's a half. And then my result of that expression is this x over x minus one. And then you just cross multiply solve from there. Okay. This one over here, I'll just address a couple things that people tried to do. Um, 
how I kind of addressed that a little bit the other day, but when you have an x squared and an x, you still have to get it all to one side and factor. What did I do the other day to, for a shortcut? I think I showed you. Mm, not on that one. When I got right here, I was a rebel. I, got, I divided by an x. I divided both sides by x, and I made a note that x equals zero was the lost root. So, but, you know, and those, there's little tricks here and there. Um, for me, I put money, money for materials for shop remodel project. I mean, I've got an east shop that's kind of my nicer shop at home, and um, it's turning into a junk pit. And I don't like it. So I'm trying to remodel it. That's actually my CAD kids final. Because they have to come for the design for my east wall cabinets and everything. Okay. So. Um, and just ad addressing, you know, uh, what day was this? Thursday? Thursday, um, I was back there, uh, I think maybe one person came back and asked a question. Boy, be aggressive, be aggressive. I don't quite not get this, and at least give me a chance to say it in a different way. Um, but in college, nobody's gonna come to you and say, do you understand what's going on? It's all gonna be you. Okay, so here we go. Stuff from the other day. So right now you'll notice that if you are somebody who was confused on a couple of those problems from the quiz, then you were probably confused on this and then it's going to carry on. It snowballs. So get aggressive, address it. Do you want me to explain any of these? I definitely will. I'll zoom out so you can look at two at a time. I have not checked my answer in the back of the book. 81 felt off to me, so did 82. I don't know. What did you get for me? 81, I got 9.59. Um, did you get 9.59? No. no. What'd you get? Something absurd. Okay, well, we'll take a look at that. Because it just, it just didn't, didn't, it didn't feel right to me. But, but anyway. We'll get there. Because sometimes they write a problem where the model doesn't quite fit it right, and um, I don't know if it's something that I did wrong. Because like on 81, I went back through my steps, I subtracted 236, should be 464. There was my problem. Okay. 424. What am I doing? I need to sharpen up my mental math skills. Gosh, terrible. 2.63. Okay. So E to the 2.63. Okay. Now, I want to show you something that's a helpful skill on these calculators. Okay. So let's just say I'm going to go side by side here. I do a split screen. Um, so I went and did my, four to, my 424 divided by 161. That's on my calculator, 2.63. I wrote it down. I went to the next step here, and now I've got to take E raised to the 2.63. So go E raised to the... What can I do now? Answer. Second answer. Okay. This part on your calculator right here, ANS... That takes the last answer and plugs it right in. So then it'll be accurate to the 10th decimal place instead. 13.9. I should have followed my gut better. Okay. 13.9. Say, oh yeah, if you agree with 13.9. So this would be 2013 
2014. Maybe it's the end of 2013, something like that. And I just made a Facebook post the other day about how um, our mental math skills need to get better. Because I came across an article that says, Lo and behold, what are elementary schools doing now? They're realizing, no, they're realizing that they need to spend 20 minutes a day on arithmetic skills. This pendulum is swinging back the other way. Do you guys agree on 82? 10.7 and then 84 and if all this looks foreign it's probably because your basic log understandings of what a log is and how it works isn't quite there yet once you get it there It'll be awesome. Okay, questions? Any of these? Anything? You want me to go back and explain how I got from one step to the next or whatever? Yes? 84. Let's take a look. Uh, the Husker Volleyball, they play at 1 on Thursday. Yeah. <clears throat> so I saw they had some tickets yet for sale. and Well, actually, I, they, they were going to. But, um, yeah, 1 o'clock Thursday, well, that wasn't going to happen. Okay, first of all, I just want to talk about, about 84 just in general. Hopefully you understand kind of how this situation is going to work. You took something out of a furnace. It was 160 degrees. <laughs> it's going to cool down. It's going to cool down. It's going to cool down. And it, the coolest it's ever going to get is room temperature. Okay. And hopefully the graph makes sense at first. It's going to cool down fairly rapidly. And then it's eventually, that's why it's got a horizontal asymptote of 20 degrees. Because that's what the room temperature was. Okay, that's why they say that if you want, let's see, if you have a cup of coffee, and I use, you use a lot of creamer like I do, here's my cup of coffee, and then this much of it's creamer. Should I put my, if I want it to be as hot as possible for as long as possible, should I add the creamer right away or later? Actually, the hotter it is, the steeper the curve is as far as losing temperature. They say you should add it right away. It's kind of weird. But anyway, so I've got this situation, and it says that's the equation. Okay. One thing don't worry about as far as where these equations come from right now, you're not expected to know that. Okay, that's where we would have technology that would help us with that. Okay. Um, and then later on, they're asking for, it says, when is it going to reach a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius? Okay. Well, if you look at it, it's going to be less than an hour. Okay. If we use the data there, somewhere it was less than, it was at 100 degrees. Okay. So now here's my equation. Let's set this equal to 100 and let's go to town. Okay. So here's my equation equal to 100. I got my plus 20. Did you figure it out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just keep going. I got my plus 20. I'm going to subtract 20. That's where my 80 came from. I'm just trying to get the exponent and the variable somehow by itself. So now I got this times 140. I divided by 140. So now I'm stuck. My exponents 
there are my variables in an exponent, so now I've got to shift gears. Okay? I rewrote it from an exponent to a log. Now, how did I do this? This is my exponent, so my log is equal to that exponent. Okay, that's how you shift gears. Okay? I use natural log, why? My base is E. If my base is E, I'm going to go right to a natural log. Could I have gone log base E, wrote it that way? Yeah. I could have wrote log base E of 0.57 is equal to, you know, I could have done that and used my change of base, but if you use natural log, it's that much quicker, that much easier. So again, my base is E, my exponent, that's what my log is equal to, and then my result after I take it to the exponent, that's what we're taking the log of. Because the log is a backward step. Find the exponent that gets me to 0.57. So I take this, still got to get my h by itself, so I divide it by the negative 0.68, and then now I've got this expression that I can st just step in and evaluate. Okay. So, um, this one right here, this bottom line, you guys hopefully would agree, this is probably an eighth grade skill, right here subtracting 20 from both sides. This is probably still about that same thing. I'm not trying to make you guys feel bad. I'm just saying these are not the tough parts. You're just going to divide by 140. This is the pre-calculus skill, going from here to here. And then we're back to eighth grade skills, divide by negative 0.68. Okay, so there's one step in there that we got to go. I got to change its form. Does that answer your question at all? Good. Anything else? Let's move on. <clears throat> so, the next section is about the models. Right now we know how to do all the math with logs and stuff. These are all the different models that, all the different types of models you can come up with for um, various applications. Now, I'm gonna be very explicit as far as what I want you guys to know. I will not give you like a matching and ask you guys to come up with the right equation for each one. Uh-uh, that's not gonna happen, okay? I just want you to look at these and realize that all of those scenarios are something that we can model, okay? Um, this one right here, just an exponential growth, like if you invest something, if you got bacteria growing, it's gonna be whoosh, okay? Here, if you have some radioactive isotope, eventually it's gonna decrease, okay? This one right here, this is used for what's called a normal distribution, okay? So this would be a good graph to represent the, um, Oh, actually, the equations are right next to them. The, the distribution of things like shoe size. If I made a little bar graph or a histogram as far as um, collected shoe size from a thousand people, it would look like this. We'd have some little itty bitty puny feet. We'd have a lot of, you know, for guys, I'm just speaking for guys. I don't know what, what girls would be like eights or something like that. For guys, maybe a lots of 11s. And then we have the freaks up here with the 14s and the 15s and the 16s and stuff like that. Okay? So, but that would be a great, um, that's a Gaussian model for um, a normal distribution. You will use those a lot in statistics. Actually, in education, we use that model a lot. Honestly, we don't use this equation, okay? Because most of the, most of the teachers, it would just go right over their head. They'd be like, Gaussian, what? E, what? Okay. There, we just talk about distributions, okay? Where this is average, this is the top, this is above average, this is below average, and then you have percentiles, all that good stuff. Hopefully, we'll have some time to talk about that second semester. Have you guys ever talked about normal dis distributions at all? Okay. Bell curve, yep. Okay. What class was that in? Was it a math class or a science class? 
English. English. All right. Good. Okay. So these are things that, um, boy, I'm telling you, if you stick with me second semester, we're going to get you guys ahead of the curve and you'll be like, ooh, percentile, a z-score. What the heck? Oh, uh, oh, we looked at that. Okay. Stuff like this, if I'm going to have a situation where something's going to start low and then rise and then get saturated, like this one might be the number of people exposed to COVID. Only 1% exposed right away, and then, it, boy, it grows like crazy. And then you've got this real steep curve of people getting exposed to COVID, and then you've got another horizontal asymptote that would represent 100% of your population. Something like that. Okay? Um, and then these are just another couple um, different types of graphs that, um, that it just rises and then starts to flatten out. Rises and it just starts to flatten out. What we are going to work on more than anything is <coughs> coming up with equations for a, for a growth and decay. I want to be able to do that. And then I want you guys to be able to do some of the math involved with these bottom ones. But we're not going to be writing equations for those. Like your, your problems you did last night, gave you an equation, asked you to do something with it. That would be for these bottom ones. Okay, but these two we're going to work on coming up with your own. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to skip right to a couple things, and I, I'm going to do things differently than the book. There's no doubt about it. Okay, um, fruit flies. Okay. I want to be able to come up with an equation, and we're not going to use this equation. We're going to come up with our own. Okay? And we're going to have this very basic form. But bottom line, we are going to need the fact that 2 yields 100, and 4 is going to yield a, a 300. So, so days, you'll want this one down. Flies. Okay, two days, 100 flies, four days, 300 flies. That right there is enough to write a, a, a exponential growth model. Okay, this is, this is kind of like, in a way, writing an equation of a line through two points. Well, we've got two points, and instead of doing, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Instead of doing y equals mx plus b, that's a line, we're just going to do a, an exponential model. y equals a b to the x. So the process is going to be the same. We're still going to just use a different type of, of uh, equation that we want to come up with. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write two equations with the, a and the, with the uh, x and the y plugged in. So 2, 100 is going to yield 100 equals AB squared. You can all do that. Plug in a, um, 2 for X and 100 for Y. So now we've got two equations, two variables, we can solve this, okay? I'm going to give you two different ways to do it, okay? Um, one thing you could do is go like this. A equals 100 over B squared. Another 8th grade skill, just getting A by itself. That's what A is. So your goal when you have two equations, two variables, is to intermingle these equations so then one variable pops out. Okay? Any idea what I should do with this? 
I'll give you a hint. I haven't got the second equation involved yet. What should I do with this? We could, but I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in. That's what A is. So let's plug it in. So write that down. 300 equals, well, A is 100 over B squared times B to the fourth. I've only got one variable now. I'm making progress. By, by solving for A and substituting for A, now I've only got one variable. And now we can just go ahead and finish this out. 300 equals 100B squared. B squared equals 2... No, duh. B squared is equal to 3. Because I divided both sides by 100. Because it's times 100 divided by 100. So now what do I do? Square root. B is approximately square root of 3, so 3 raised to 0 0.5, 1.732. Okay, so let's stop, take a deep breath. Let's outline what we did again. I took the data, wrote it as an ordered pair, plugged them into my equation. Okay, that's how I got my two equations. I got one variable by itself, plugged it in. And the rest is just simplify. So what I've got so far is I got y is equal to a times 1.732 raised the x. Am I done? Do I have my whole model? What do I need to find? Hey, I gotta find A now. How am I gonna find A? Yeah, plug one of them in. Plug one of them in. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I just need my A. So I'm gonna pick one of my points. Remember how when we were writing equations of lines, we picked a point and plugged it in to find our y-intercept. Same deal here. Two and one hundred. So I'm going to go 100 equals a times 1.732 squared. I put in 2 for x, 100 for y, because that was one of my points. Go ahead, solve for a. I will not yell at you for grabbing your calculator.